Welcome everybody. This is Tommy's Outdoors podcast number two. And today I want to talk about the book that I read recently. Uh, the book is uh, written by famous hunter Stephen Rinella. Uh, some of you might know Stephen as a host of uh, Netflix series Meat Eater. Um, he also have his podcast uh, called Meat Eater. There's a YouTube channel, Meat Eater, and um, obviously Twitter feed and uh, Instagram, Meat Eater, and, and so on and so on. But Stephen describes himself as an outdoors writer. Uh, so I decided to reach out uh, for one of his books. Uh, he wrote a number of books. And uh, the one uh, that I'm going to be talking about today was uh, released in 2012. And it's called Meat Eater. Not surprisingly. Uh, the full title is Meat Eater Adventures from the Life of an American Hunter. Um, okay, so the book is really a collection of hunting stories. And I think that, like, for me, it's awesome. As a person who is new to hunting, uh, I think that there's no better way to submerge in the whole um, culture and, and ambience and everything that is related to hunting. Uh, there's no better way than uh, listening or reading hunting stories um, that you can then kind of get all the aspects of hunting, not only technical, but also, you know, what's going through your head, what's a, what's the perception of others, you know, what is the relation to environment and so on and so on. So, uh, the, so first of all, I think it's an excellent formula. And like uh, Stephen says himself in the beginning of the book, that hunting story is, is a not new thing. And, and and actually one of the themes that is common throughout the book is that hunting was uh, with us, with humankind since since the beginning. We were always hunters. And um, and I suppose that's that's um, um, that's a theme of of the whole uh, activity. Uh, you know, the whole meat eater stuff is is revolves around like you know that the hunting is was and still is a way of gathering food. In fact, um, so these stories are in a chronological order. Um, they start from the times where where Arthur was a little kid and he starts so it, he he describes how he starts hunting how he get into hunting how he was hunting with his father how he was hunting with with his brothers and like for me it's great because it happens that uh, around the time where uh, Stephen was a little kid I was a little kid too um so even though we living in a different continent, uh, because action of the book and everything that's in the book is is uh, uh, taking place in the in a America, um, even though we are in a different continent, I can uh, relate to how it was in the times when we were kids, and how life was different then compared to what is now, and how the environment was different, and how the wildlife was, was in a different state and shape, and, and how people were different. Um, so I like that aspect. Um, so as, as you go through the book, as you're reading the stories, you can, um, you can see how uh author was developing as a hunter how uh changes in the world in the surrounding world were were changing his attitude towards hunting how he was developing and and everything else that was changing and how he was going through um you know college and so on and so on while hunting was still somewhere in the background um so that's a that's a great formula um also uh, throughout the book and throughout all those stories, you have plenty of references to the history, um, not only to the history of the United States and and what role hunting played, and and you know about uh, people who are really conquering the continent, uh, but also references to history of humankind, uh, and 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 how hunting was always. Uh, 
part of our lives and how hunting helped us survive and how hunting helped us um, to really uh, be where we are at, uh, right now and, and how um, it, it changed the role and how it was repositioned um, you know in the modern world across the across the not, not only from uh, times when when author was a kid to now but also you know back in the back in the days and when it first humans uh start colonizing um uh, surface of the earth uh the hunting was always there so that's 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 interesting also uh theme that goes uh, throughout these stories uh, so that's that's all very good and and you know i i don't want to give out too much about the book because i hope that after listening to that podcast podcast everybody uh, well, just open open your Kindle and order that book and read it, and I and I thoroughly recommend that because I think that this is this is this is a great book, you know, uh, not only for hunters, uh, but in general and people who are interested in wildlife and and maybe even uh, for people who are uh, against hunting. Uh, they can if they have an open mind, then maybe they can reevaluate their their position. Um. However, I I want to um, uh, stop for a moment and dive a little bit deeper about chapter uh, when he touches about uh, touches on catch and release, and that is a subject that is particularly close to my heart um, because I might be new to hunting, but I'm an angler. I'm angling, uh, fishing for for many years, and Given the state of the environment and everything that's going on, uh, catch and release is is you know important part of of, of fishing of angling, and and uh, you know even if you listen to the previous episode of of the podcast, your 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 note is that you know you in modern day and you you probably cannot talk about fishing and not talking about catch and release, and um, so. First of all, um, Stephen recognizes that angling is really a type of hunting, is a part of, like, it also is a hunting. Um, however, um, I think he does it on purpose. Um, he initially absolutely smashes the idea of catch and release. And essentially he says, like, that, that's stupid. Okay. And... Um, and after that, he proceeds to picture himself as a hardcore catch and release angler, okay, and and essentially he leaves it at that, no conclusion. Um, so that got me wonder uh, why he why he does that, and and undoubtedly he leaves that chapter kind of open without conclusion. Um, so let me let me delve into that a little bit deeper. Um, so m maybe I'm like, like like I said. So no doubt that that Stephen Rinella knows a lot about angling and he knows a lot about catch and release. And um, so maybe let me let me just read this this piece in a book uh, where he describes uh, catch and release. Okay. So he goes on saying, just to be clear, catch and release fishing amounts to poking a hole in a fish's face and exhausting it, then letting it go because you don't want to hurt it. When I say the practice is strange, I'm saying that its initial invention must have been the result of some freakish anomaly. If you roll back human history to the very beginning and let our species have another go at it, we definitely rediscover such things as dancing, hunting, and benefits of shelter, uh, drug, ab drug abuse, restaurants, and maybe even online dating. Dating, But catch and release would almost certainly join the ranks of the high-heeled shoes and wearing your pants down around your hips so that you go got to walk funny in order to keep them from falling down. Falling down. Um, the circumstances that delivered uh, these ideas just wouldn't be replicated, right? So, um, 
I think that most definitely uh, circumstances that develop that idea would be replicated. That's for sure. Okay. So first, when you read this, um, you might say that his opinion or this opinion is uneducated opinion, which obviously is not the case um, because he around the book is making a lot of references to uh, conservation, protecting the environment, protecting the species, managing the species. Um, so I think he put this bit in there uh, just as a just as a hyperbole, maybe maybe just as just as you know a kind of uh, trying to drive the point uh, that he's trying to make later in this chapter. I kind of think that I f know what what was his intention, um, but I'm not really sure because, like I said, after that, after that kind of strong uh, beginning, uh, he then uh, explains how he got into catch and release angling, and and like I said, uh, he this, you know what from what you're reading from that story, he is a hardcore catch and release angler, right, and. Um, and there's no conclusion. Only thing is that he he joined the ranks of catch and release and he left. And and by left he is really one episode when he you know caught a fish and he ate it and that's it. Um, so uh, let let me tell you what I think about it. Um, so so first of all, obviously, um, some examples that some examples that he's giving in the book are 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 plain wrong, and he knows about it. And I. I particularly not intending to, to, you know, dissect that and take every sentence and say, oh, why he was wrong and so on and so on. Um, because uh, of, I, I suppose the, the point was that, you know, uh, you're, you're hurting the, the, the fish, the animal and so on. So, and, and again, this is surprising to me because I'm, I'm pretty sure that the amount of, um, things that are said in the book about management of the species and trying to uh, have more uh, of of game than less and and this is inherent to hunting. This is the same story that goes for for angling and catch and release is quite simply one of the tools of management that are available to angler that are not available to hunter period okay so I thoroughly agree with a uh, message that Stephen Renella tried to convey that um, when you kill the animal, you really uh, kind of bound to take the take the meat, eat the meat, uh, and and he even goes as far as saying, you know, if you're if you allow that meat to spoil, you should get your hand pinned to the uh, board and skinned with the pliers and filleted and so on. Which per personally, I thought it was a little bit overboard, but maybe it was a just part of the folklore. Um, what catch and release is, is quite simply way of managing uh, the species. Uh, and if if there were a possibility to actually shoot a deer or shoot a bear and somehow make it walk away, I'm pretty sure that would be the case as well, except, you know, shoot and release is not an option. So you have to eat the meat, um, which is... I suppose, the common theme of meat eater. Uh, while angling, on the surface, the same principle applies, okay? You catch the fish and you should eat that fish. And I think that disregarding that additional option that you have to release the fish after catching it is um, it's, it's bad because that's additional option that allows anglers to still enjoy, enjoy the game and still pursue their activity uh, while not necessarily removing the species out of the environment. Um, so so that's important part that is missing. And, um, you know, I had initially when I started reading that 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 chapter, I thought, like, oh, that's going to be kind of now difficult to, to read that book forward. But no, the book is well written and, and, and even that chapter is quite enjoyable. Um, so that's okay. So that that's the only thing that I can that I didn't particularly like in that book, not because, you know, choice of words or whatever, but because it, it wasn't concluded, you know. 
it wasn't it was no conclusion because quite clearly uh Stephen Rinella is very educated in the matters of uh wildlife and conservation and no doubt he knows the role and and importance of catch and release um so how he chooses to not uh set it in in a, in a book um but you know um perhaps perhaps there is a uh, reason that he he's done it this way i don't find that i can find this reason um so that's that's it um outside of that um last chapter of the book is is uh, a ab- absolute masterpiece in in art of writing uh, and it's it's not about you know the content and what what is actually written but the way he uses words and and puts the sentences together and so on that's that's probably the the best piece uh, uh that i ever read certainly best piece that i ever read in in english language uh so that's that's awesome and and at the end uh there's an insert with a with the photographs which are again um, chronologically, and there are photographs of his father and him as a kid and his brothers and so on, progressing uh, to the uh, today's day. And so that's you know very nice way of finish the book with some pictures and 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 I, I like that a lot. Um, so overall, like I said, uh, book very good book, uh, uh, Meat Eater by Stephen Rinella. Thoroughly recommend it. Uh, go and buy it now. And if you're an angler and you're and 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 catch and release is uh, particularly dear to your heart, um, don't don't get discouraged uh, by chapter seven. Um, and and you know uh, I would I would encourage everybody who's listening to the podcast leave the comments um, what you think about it. Uh, what's your opinion uh, and and why you think uh, that that chapter might have been written in the way it was written uh, I'm interested in your opinion so if you if you're listening to that podcast on SoundCloud you can leave the comments uh, you can you can uh, uh, add me at um, uh, on on uh, Twitter it's uh, at outdoors podcast and um, I think that's all what I have for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to go out and, and, and buy that book. And uh, I hope you're going to subscribe to the podcast and tune in to the next episode that's going to be out shortly. Thank you.